I honestly think the world would be a better place if everyone understood poker <laughs> in, in a serious way. Hello, everybody. I am joined by one of my absolute favorites, one of the treasures of the poker space. We are so lucky to have her, Miss Maria Konnikova. Why have I not read your book, by the way? Like, I just saw the book on your Twitter and I'm like, what am I doing? Okay, so anyways, for everyone who hasn't already, um, snap by The Biggest Bluff, please. Um, Maria, you came into the poker space um, as sort of a interloper, I don't know, so, like an explorer <laughs> of the space, someone to oh. experience what poker was like and to tell your own version of the poker story. And since then, you have become a key figure in the space. <laughs> and yeah, I guess before we get into Dreamers, I did just want to... Yeah. Um, hear from you a little bit about what what role sort of poker is playing in your life right now and has it been sort of an albatross to get the book done so that you can focus on on poker in a, in a slightly different way or what's what has been your experience yeah. now as full poker player mode yeah, um, those are those are lots of interesting questions, and I'm not surprised because you always ask wonderful questions, and you are one of my favorites, Sarah. So it is it is a pleasure to talk to you again. Um, but yeah, you know, when I started out, as you've uh, as you've kind of said, I was a total outsider um, and really had no idea um, whether I would even like the game, right? Because I didn't need to like it for the biggest bluff to work. I just needed to understand it as a metaphor for life, kind of have this kind of journey. Um, and you know, it's a good thing that I ended up loving it. Um, because I think it would have been a very miserable time and a very, very different book, um, had that not been the case. Um, and I, I've said this a million times, but let me just say it for a million and first, a million and once, I don't know, <laughs> time that um, I'm just so ridiculously lucky that I was mentored by you know, Eric Seidel and some of the just best players um, in the game came along because of that. Like who, who else has that kind of experience? And I think that that's one of the reasons why I ended up loving the game because the people who I surrounded myself with were people who truly were passionate about it. Um, the reason I'm saying all of this is that to lead up to your kind of the second part of your question, what about now? You know, what role is poker playing in my life now that the biggest bluff has come out um, and you know, I've moved on to other projects? Um, and the answer is because I really fell in love with it and fell in love with what it could teach me about the world, about my own thinking, um, about myself as an individual, and still feel like it's giving me so much and teaching me so much. Um, it's stayed a central part of my life. I think a lot of people, mainly my grandmother, who was not on board with um, this whole thing to begin with, thought that now that the book is out, you know, oh, can, you're, you're done with poker now, right? Like, <laughs> we, uh, we finished and, and now you can go back. Um, and that's not at all what happened. And that's not at all what I feel like. I've started to feel like it's going to be a part of my life indefinitely. Um, it's definitely not something, you know, when I was writing The Biggest Bluff, I played poker and studied poker full time, right? It was a full time job. You know, I was you know, every single day, every single day, you know, 10 hours a day, 11, 12. I'm not doing that anymore because I'm still a writer. I'm still a journalist. I have other interests. I have other things to do. Um, but I would still say that I take it very seriously. I'm still um, studying all the time um, and I'm still playing. And I am excited to stay as kind of an ambassador of the game. And I've been, one of the best things about The Biggest Bluff coming out was how many people, um, both men and women, um, have just reached out and said, you know, I was like you, I had no idea what poker was and you got me into the game. You know, where do I start? Where do I play? You know, I, I love this. And the most gratifying, to be honest, is women, because as we all know, <laughs> growing women in the game is an uphill battle. Um, and, you know, I, I make a joke when I when I give talks. I was like, you know, when I started, 
about 98% of the fields were male and now it's about 97%. So, you know, we've made lots of progress <laughs> and, and it's just mind boggling that those are actually still the numbers. Right. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and it's not good, but I hope that, you know, little by little, um, if people like me um, pick up the game in a serious way and show people the possibilities that it offers, the fact that it's not gambling, that it's this just really rich and fascinating way to enhance how you think about the world and be a better human in the world. I honestly think the world would be a better place if everyone understood poker <laughs> in, in a serious way, um, that it will bring more people who would not generally be drawn to the game to the game um and i am still working on um a number of poker related um projects in terms of writing so stay tuned i was going to ask before we like moved on too far into dreamers yeah. about if there's any like secret projects or like public <laughs> projects that maybe people, uh, what are there, you working on there are um so mostly secret but there is a but soon to be public i hope um and they, there are two that involve uh, the screen world. Um, so that'll be, that'll be fun, I hope. Um, but I can't say anything else. And then um, I'm working on my next book, which is not about poker as such, but it's very poker adjacent. Um, and I can just like the, give the one word summary. It's about cheating. Great, which um, is works up, like it was really popular yes. right now, really trending <laughs> right now in the poker space. Um, and I think you know something that, as someone with a background in psychology and someone kind of who's now part of the poker world, I can bring an interesting perspective um, into that into those topics. I hope um, absolutely. So yes, so that's that's what I'm working on. And like I said, I'm still playing poker, um, EPT Monte Carlo, in a few weeks. Well, I think you're someone that's really uniquely positioned and like dropping your grandma's thoughts on poker, <laughs> I think is something we can all really relate to, but not all of us have the same, you know, audience that is so traditionally non-poker, but also extremely um, academic and, you know, very sharp people. And it is something I interviewed Tom um, a few days ago, and and he had mentioned that it's something that you're super passionate about, which makes a lot of sense to me. And he said, um, ends up being kind of like an element of this story dreamers, which by the way, um, none of us have seen yet. Including so me. <laughs> yeah, we have no idea what's actually coming. Um, but but because you're so uniquely positioned, I, I love that you've, um, that you've become so passionate about this. And I did want to get a little taste of yeah. your take on how people outside of poker perceive poker um, and sort of what you do and the battles you face in order to showcase what is the reality of, of what poker yeah. and poker players are. You know, the um, unfortunate truth is that um, in the public mind, poker is very much synonymous with blackjack gambling you know roulette people people really do not understand the difference you know the first question i'm always asked is oh so you count cards right like you play poker you count cards and it's a running joke because i'm not the only one right almost everyone gets asked that and i'm like no you know that that's not poker um that's blackjack if you start counting cards in poker in a mark deck then we're, you're, we're playing a different game now um and that's the subject of my next book right so that's, right. So that's uh that's something else but it's an it's such an uphill battle because people just think money casino gambling and so the thing that i have to push back on and try to illustrate over and over and over is that this is a game of skill and it is completely distinct from anything else you would find in a casino. And it's actually much closer to chess than it is to blackjack um, when it comes to skill versus chance. Because you know, there is an element of gambling in poker. There's an element of gambling in chess. There's an element of gambling in life, right? Everything, there's an element of gambling because we live in a world with uncertainty. And there's no such thing as 100% certainty ever. And so you're always taking a gamble. It's always probabilistic. You know, I know what I'm having for lunch with, is it with 100% certainty? No, because lunch isn't for a few hours. I'm like, who the hell knows what's going to happen? I might die. 
um, you know, I hate saying that, but there's, there's no, there's no, there's no such thing as a hundred percent certainty, by the way, I hope I don't die. Um, so I, I don't want to jinx myself, but, um, but you know, there's, I might even, I might, so many things might happen, right? There might be a fire. I might have to leave the apartment and, you know, there goes lunch and everything else. Happens. So all I'm saying is that life is a gamble. Um, every single decision we make is a probabilistic decision. And poker is much more balanced towards skill than chance. And there are lots of fascinating statistics and studies, a number of which um, are in the biggest bluff, some of which came out after the biggest bluff, that show that the vast majority of the time, and I do mean the vast majority, I mean, some of these studies, you know, it shows like over 80% of the time in some sample sizes, and some samples of players, the best hand does not win which means that somehow someone got the best hand to fold. And that is the heart of a skill game, right? That you can win with the worst hand and, and you can lose with the best hand. And that's not true of any gambling endeavor. In any gambling endeavor, you have to have the best hand to win. And in poker, that's just not true. And I get, I get very upset where I have to just say this over and over and over and people still push back and say, yeah, but you're still a gambler. And I say, no, I'm not. You know, I've actually, I've actually never played slots in my life <laughs> ever. Um, not a single time. Um, and I have played blackjack exactly once. Um, where at one of the poker stops. Um, I actually, it was at PCA when it was back in Atlantis. Um, some of our mutual friends, um, decided that they were going to force me to play blackjack because I'd never played. Um, and I said no, and I was going and I was going home and then they found a $25 chip on the floor and picked it up and said, look, Maria, I'm like it's fate, you have to play this. So I did. Um, and I think ran it up to like 5k and then lost it all and went to bed. Um, and <laughs> that was my experience. And it was the most boring hour of my life. It was just, I hated it. Um, so I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to play blackjack again. Um, and it's frustrating that that is lumped in together with poker, which is, you know, such a rich, nuanced game of skill, of psychology, of life. Um, and something that is wonderful, though, is that the people who agree with me are some of the most profound thinkers and interesting writers and wonderful humans in the world. Um, so, the people who are actually who totally were on my side from like day one are, you know, people like my, you know, my writing mentor, for instance, who, who is, you know, a internationally bestselling author who's like, wow, this is amazing. This is so cool. He doesn't play poker, but he thought this was really cool. My uh, former, my dissertation advisor, who unfortunately died before the biggest bluff came out, but I dedicated the book to him, Walter Michel, who's one of the greatest psychologists of the 20th century. He completely got what I was doing and was like, wow this is phenomenal. Like this, this is the way forward. I'm so glad that you're actually doing this and not going into academia and writing yet another paper that no one's going to read because you're actually getting at the essence of self-control and of all of these questions that you and I have been studying in academia here, they're coming to life in poker. So that's gratifying that the people who count get it. Um, but I'm still constantly pushing back against the vast majority, um, you know, the opinions of people who, who don't get it and who don't understand what I'm doing and who think that, you know, I should have long been back in traditional journalistic endeavors and who don't understand why I'm still, quote unquote, wasting my time playing poker. Um, and I just have to keep explaining that I don't feel like it's a waste of time. If there ever comes a day when I feel like it's a waste of time, that's the day I will stop. And it's amazing because if you look on Twitter, you will also see plenty of people who have read the book, who came into it with this perspective and who leave the book with like a completely different perspective. And I mean, that's amazing on so many levels, but you know, I think we all in the poker community owe you a huge debt of gratitude for that. <laughs> and we are all buying the book right now, by the way. I am like so mad at myself that I... <laughs> Yeah, by the way, I take back all the nice things I ever said yeah, about I don't, you. Like, and, what am I doing? I was like, how did I like, I, and I was like waiting for it, it to came come out, out. It came out during the pandemic when yeah. everyone was in lockdown. So, you know. And I've had like 14 babies since then. So, like, And you have had 14 babies. <laughs> and I mean, that's, that's first of all, congratulations. Secondly, <laughs> you, you are ridiculously talented because having 14 babies in two years, two years. is just, it's amazing. 
Yeah, I really, I really hate it. You really needed to outdo everyone, right? You're like, that's no, right. I can, I'm gonna I can do it better. <laughs> I have to have my my one main thing. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about dreamers, which we yeah. it's an interesting, you know, place to be from an interview perspective and also from an interviewee perspective because actually none of us know what's coming. Um, but it does. <laughs> I do. Look... I do love though. I'm going to interrupt you. That, yeah. you know, I'm I'm the academic, you know, with my wonderful PhD. The one quote that they pulled from dreamers has me being like, "Well, how do you learn to deal with the shit that luck is going to throw in your way?" Because you know, let's face it, it's it's going to throw some stuff your way. But I'm like, I'm so glad that the one quote that you pulled from the entire several hours of interviews that I did um, has me, you know, just saying, yeah, sh- life's going to throw shit at you. I'm like, that's it's a very profound academic statement. Um, and yeah. I and I stand behind it. Life will Thank throw you. shit at you. Yeah. Now I continue, actually, please. <laughs> after watching the preview, I actually had to ask Tom, I was like, hey, listen, are my kids going to be able to watch this? Like, is this okay? Because <laughs> because of me. Uh, because if Maria is dropping s bombs, like, who knows what these poker players are going to do? Like, I don't know what's what's coming. Um, but I think you know, not dissimilar from uh, not knowing what's going to happen with your lunch. Um, I think embarking on a documentary is one of those things where you most certainly do not know what is coming, right? You know that you have interesting subjects, you know that you have some sort of subject matter, uh, Mm -hmm. but where the story is going to go and take you, you don't know. Um, That being said, watching the preview, it looks amazing. I think the, the minds that Tom has put together are you guys really complement each other in a really interesting way. I think the win itself, this, uh, the WPT championship was such a positive great was, event for yeah. some reason yeah like everything just felt so wonderful there and um so yeah I guess I first just wanted to ask you a little bit about being a part of this team it's a really yeah. cool cool group of people that are all I think unique but all aligned I think in a lot of mm-hmm. other ways so talk to me a little bit about um your experience sort of working with the above the felt crew Yeah. um, Well, when Tom first approached me, I um, wasn't quite sure what to expect. But then, you know, I um, saw I was one of the, I think, earlier people um, who was with the group that has now expanded. But he kind of um, he talked me through his philosophy and the types of people that he wanted and what he was trying to accomplish. And it really aligned with what I wanted from the game in terms of you know, people who aren't in it for the right reasons. Um, it's it's interesting because, you know, when you're when you're a professional poker player, um, and not everyone on the roster, by the way, is a full time professional poker player. I no longer call myself a professional poker player because, you know, I don't make the majority of my income from poker anymore. I did, right? <laughs> so so when I when I was uh, working on the biggest bluff, like that's that's how I made my money, um, and I wanted to do that to be able to live that experience, but not anymore. So I'm semi pro. I don't know what, I don't know what I call myself anymore, but um, it's a, it's a group of people who, even though are mostly professionals are not motivated by money. If that makes sense. Um, And that's such a strange thing to say about poker players when you think about the stereotypes, but I think the greatest players, the people I surround them, myself with um, and the people who are on the above the felt team are people who love the game and have other reasons for playing it and who who truly enjoy learning and studying and being there Um, they're not grinders and I I don't say that in a actually I kind of say that in a deprecating way but (laughs) but but only a little bit because I'm saying it in like the grinder that's miserable Right. Not the happy grinder. There are happy grinders, but the word grinder itself just kind of evokes misery that you're just sitting there and you're just like going day to day and hour to hour. And whenever I'm at a poker tournament and I see people who look like that, I just want to shake them and say, you're playing a fucking game. <laughs> like, are you like, if this is how you feel about it, what in the world are you doing here? Like, this is not a great way, you know, of spending the day. Your days are 12 hours long. You might play three days for 12 hours and then come away with zero dollars when you're playing tournament poker because you didn't make the money. And why would you ever do that? I mean, it's harder, it's longer hours, it's more emotionally, physically draining than almost any other job. If you're miserable, 
then then what's what's even the point? And the above the fell team is the opposite of that. They're people who take joy um, in what they're doing, who appreciate the intellectual challenges, who appreciate you know what what the game is actually about. Um, and I love how diverse the group is. You know, there are people who stream, but there are also people who hate streaming. <laughs> there are you know people who are announcers and commentators and content creators and just players, um, but they all, I think, represent the game in really positive ways. Um, and I have very, very little tolerance for kind of the toxic parts of, uh, the, of the poker community and the poker discourse, but it exists, by the way, everywhere. Like I come from, you know, the world of journalism and media, let me tell you, toxic. <laughs> People think poker Twitter is toxic. I'm like, let me, let me introduce you to journalistic Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> to the to the shit people pull there, um, so it's a part of everything. But I like to focus on the things that are positive. Some because I actually, once again, um, contrary to popular belief, I actually see poker as a positive sum game, not as a zero sum game. Um, because even though any particular hand is obviously zero sum, you know, I win, you lose, you win, I lose. There's so much more there. Um, and it's not just about the monetary exchange. And so I think at the end of the day, um, it is a positive sum endeavor. And if it weren't, I wouldn't play. Which is so interesting because one of the very few parts that I do know from the movie is, I think, it, them saying like Matt Berkey busted and then he's like salty and like going to the bathroom <laughs> or whatever, but then realizes like he still has a whole bunch of other people that he's there to support yeah. and to help and talk to. And yeah, there's so many layers of your responsibility for sure for sure and i still you know i think that the um that wpt event at the win was the best event of the year it was just it was incredible i had so much fun um and it was such a well-run series i went into it being up for the year in poker and i ended the year down because I bricked every single event with multiple bullets and did not have a single cash, um, including the main, which was, you know, a 10 K I fired multiple bullets in that. So there went, you know, there went all of my profit for the year in two weeks. And I still think it was the best um, event of the year. So all to say, it's not all about the money, although it would have been nice to cash in at least something, but, but we won't talk about that. Oh my gosh, Maria. It's like always just, so. I feel like I always could talk to you for, five hours. And, <laughs> you know, I also recognize that no one, you know, got paid to do this documentary and no one's getting paid to do a press tour for this show. But um, I know that it's a big part of your world and your heart to show poker to people and to show poker the true nature of, or show people the true nature of poker. So I really, I appreciate you taking the time to do the documentary. I appreciate you taking the time to do this interview and we're of all course. very excited to see it. And I am very excited in two days to finish the book I'm reading now so that I can get out too. <laughs> <as well. laughs> 